a serial killer with more than 40 victims, a tragic house fire, and a mysterious disappearance. The life story of Belle Gunness sounds more like fiction than fact, but in the late 1800s, it couldn't have been more real. Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Maze Mortem. My name is Mayfield, and today we'll be talking about Belle Gunness, an early American serial killer who murdered for money and faked her death. Before we start, I do need to make a disclaimer that this video is for educational purposes. Viewer discretion is advised because this video will have content concerning the murders of both adults and children. As usual, here's a shot of my outfit for today. My dress is Alice and the Pirates, my socks are Baby the Starshine Bright, and everything else is off-brand. Now that we've got all of that out of the way, I'll pour the tea and we can get into it. Belle Gunness was born Brynhild Storset on November 11, 1859. She was born in Selbu, Norway, and was the youngest of eight children. She did not enjoy living in Norway, however, and by the age of 14, she was working at local farms around her home so she could earn enough money to move to New York City. She finally got to the United States in 1881 and changed her name to Belle Gunness. Belle eventually moved to Chicago, where her sister and brother-in-law lived, and started to live with them. She worked as a domestic servant for a while, and then she eventually settled on a job as a butcher where she would cut up animals and process them for eating. So the thing about Belle is that we know she killed a lot of people. Only 14 are confirmed, but it's been suggested she killed a lot more than that. So let's start talking about some of her victims. Belle married a man named Mad Sorensen in 1884. They were together for about 10 years, and they had several children together. But whether or not they were her biological children or if they were adopted is unclear. The couple also bought a candy store in 1894, but it proved to be unfruitful, and it cost them a lot of money to run it. Less than a year after buying this candy store, it burnt down in a mysterious fire, giving them a sizable payout from the insurance company. The people around them did suspect that it was arson, but they didn't really pursue this idea because it's not like they had done it before, so they didn't really think anything of it, so they decided to give them the benefit of the doubt. But six years later, their home actually burnt down as well, giving them another large insurance payout. In a tragic turn of events, after they had burned down their home for the insurance money, Belle kind of decided that her husband was of no more use to her. Personally, I kind of wonder if he was thinking about going to the police about all of their insurance fraud, but of course that's just speculation. Back to the story, though, he actually had a life insurance policy worth about $2,000. He was planning on letting this one life insurance policy run out so that he could sign up for another life insurance policy that was worth about $3,000. I don't know much about insurance. Don't ask me about insurance, I don't know anything about it. Coincidentally, both of these life insurance policies were in effect on the same day on July 30th, 1900. And he died suddenly of a brain hemorrhage on this exact day, allowing Belle to collect about $5,000, which in today's money would be about $150,000. It was actually never proven that Belle murdered her husband, however, I think in hindsight, it's fairly obvious what happened. And also, to rewind a little bit, it's suspected that before this house fire, Belle actually might have killed her two infant children. A post-mortem examination of the children showed that they both died of an inflammation in the large intestine, which can come from poisoning. She also collected insurance payments on these deaths as well, and this is the one that really got the neighbors talking. It sounds like they were already suspicious of her even before the house fire happened. Whatever went on there, Belle eventually had all of this insurance money saved up, and she used it to buy a pig farm in Laporte, Indiana. And quite frankly, if you know anything about true crime, nothing good happens on a pig farm. Sorry, pig farmers. After buying this pig farm, she marries a man named Peter Gunness on April 1st, 1902, which is a little ironic because that's April Fool's Day and this man definitely got hoodwinked. You know, maybe I should not frame that so lightly by calling it getting hoodwinked because he was murdered. Yeah. Only a week after he married Belle, Peter's infant daughter died mysteriously and suddenly of unknown causes while he was out of the house, and Belle was the only other person at home at the time. Poor Peter then died about eight months later due to blunt force trauma. Belle put on a believable performance for the authorities, crying and screaming hysterically, saying that a meat grinder had fallen off of a high shelf and hit him in the head. After taking a look at Peter's body, the local coroner did actually suspect murder, but after convening a jury to investigate the death, nothing really ever came of it. After after this, Belle ended up collecting a $3,000 insurance payout. Some years later, Belle started placing personal ads in the local newspaper saying that she was in need of romance and looking for a husband. She would go on to trade letters with multiple men, telling them to come visit her at her farm and to bring money with them, usually around $1,000 to show that they were serious about marrying her. She also made sure to tell them to keep their visits a secret from everyone. Dozens of men would go see Belle on her remote farm with a cash payment in hand and all of them would end up disappearing mysteriously. It was noted by more than one person that while these men did disappear, their luggage did not. A local carpenter
printer who frequently did work for Bell on her farm would say that these men would supposedly run off, but they would leave all of their steamer trunks behind. This carpenter also went on to mention how there were more than a dozen steamer trunks lying around Bell's house, all still full of personal items. So all of these dudes are disappearing off of Bell's farm, and the people in town are starting to notice and they're getting suspicious. Bell responds to this by doing the sensible thing, the adult solution. She burns her house down, seemingly with her and her children still inside. In the ashes of the home, authorities found the headless body of an adult woman and also the bodies of Bell's three children. But because the head was missing from this body, no one's actually sure whether or not it was really Bell. A few locals who knew Bell personally took a look at the body and said it looked nothing like her, even without the head. Local authorities measured this body and then compared the measurements to Bell's known measurements, which were available at the local tailors, and the measurements did not match up. The body that they found in the ashes of the home was about 5 foot 3 and at best 150 pounds. Meanwhile, Bell was known to be about 5 foot 8 and anywhere from 180 to 200 pounds. They even went so far as to look into the stomach contents of this body to see what the person had eaten last before they died, and they found a bunch of strychnine. I think it's pronounced strychnine, right? Strychnine? They were poisoned. However, in the end, this was ruled to be Belle's body because they found a few of her teeth lying in the ashes of the home that matched her dental records. But that still does not explain why the body looked nothing like her. My own little personal theory that I came up with is that maybe Belle's body shrunk in the heat of the fire. This does happen apparently, but I'm not quite sure to what extent. But that doesn't tell us why her head was removed or where it is. Some of the townspeople speculated that maybe it was her previous farmhand who killed her. Apparently this farmhand that she had fired a while ago was in love with her and he didn't like that all of these suitors were coming to her farm. Of course, none of this was ever proven. Whether or not that headless woman was actually Belle is something that people debate to this day. So now that Belle is either missing or dead, what about all of the people that she murdered and how did the authorities find out about it? Well, when you have a bunch of suitors coming to your farm, one of them's bound to tell someone where they're going and why. Telling somebody to keep things a secret doesn't mean they're going to keep things a secret, you know what I mean? This is exactly how it went down for a man named Andrew Helgelin, who exchanged letters with Belle before he went to meet her. In the letters, whenever she asked him to come visit, she instructed that he tell no one where he was going. In the end, he ignored this and he told his brother, Azel. When Andrew did not return home, his brother Azel went to Laporte, Indiana, and he contacted the sheriff, saying that he believed there was foul play. And then, the most recent farmhand that had worked on Bell's farm came forward as well. His name was Joe Maxson, and he told the sheriff that Bell asked him to bring wheelbarrows full of dirt to an area where the hogs were fed. This feeding area for the hogs was said to have a high wire fence and multiple depressions in the dirt. Bell had told Joe that these depressions had trash in the bottoms of them, and that he needed to put dirt over them so that the ground was level. So that's exactly what he did. But if you know anything about burying a body, you also know that dirt settles as the body decomposes in the earth. Why am I saying that like I know how to bury a body? I think dirt actually settles whenever you bury anything in the ground, but I think for a body it's just really obvious because the hole is like body sized. <laughs> If you see a body-sized depression in the dirt, don't dig, just call somebody, okay? So now that the sheriff knows all of this, he finally realizes that Belle had been doing something nefarious on the pig farm. On May 3rd of 1908, the sheriff takes a team of about 12 men to dig up the farm. When they get to the hog feeding area, they find the first body that belongs to Jenny Olson. They also find Azel's brother Andrew and the bodies of two unidentified children. In the end, they dig up the remains of about 11 dismembered people, all stuffed into burlap sacks. They also had quicklime spread on their faces and in their ears, likely to prevent identification. While there were already way too many bodies on this farm, it's speculated that Belle actually killed up to 45 people in her lifetime. And due to the popularity of the case in the media at the time, there were multiple sightings of Belle all over the United States. People were sending in tips from Chicago, New York City, Los Angeles, and San Francisco. The sheriff of LaPorte, Indiana, actually said that he received to report on Bell's whereabouts about twice a month until he retired, and the people in Laporte were actually divided over whether or not Bell was actually dead. Either way, no matter what happened to her, it doesn't seem like Bell ever faced any consequences for her actions. So do you guys think that headless body was actually Bell, or do you think she had run away in the night and used somebody else? If you like my video, please hit like and subscribe because I'm still just a new YouTuber and it really helps me out a lot. I'll see you again next week, okay guys? Bye! Oh, you know what? That light over there? She's off. Hang on. Hang on one minute.